This is the story of how I went from failing out of over seven college classes to graduating with honors while working full-time in a full-time program, being in an incredible relationship with my now husband, and starting the beginnings of a life coaching company for college students. So where do we begin? Let's go all the way back to... I am the daughter of two immigrants. My parents are from the Dominican Republic. And of course, they came to the United States to give themselves and their potential future children a better life. So I grew up in the south side of Providence, Rhode Island, which has the worst public school education system in the world. But nonetheless, I was an honorable student throughout my entire secondary primary education. I actually graduated second in my class in high school, but I always tell people this, like, you don't really have to do much to be a good student. You just had to not get in trouble, complete all your work, and, um, like, behave, you know? So I knew that the goal was always going to be college, and I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an OBGYN. And through the help of my high school counselors, I was able to get into every single college that I applied to, many with full scholarships, and I ended up going to a predominant, predominantly white institution. It was a private college here in the state of Rhode Island called Providence College, and when I say that I was grossly underprepared for college, that is an understatement. I felt extremely out of my league intellectually and financially. I, and it showed in my confidence and my grades, and I did the best that I could with what I knew. But by the time that I was a junior in college, I had failed out of or withdrawn from over seven classes. And I'd done some live streams on Instagram and in my Instagram stories where I've actually shared my transcript and all of the Fs that I got and the fact that my GPA when I graduated was a 2.6. The entire time that I was in college, though, I hid how much I was struggling for as long as I could out of pure embarrassment and pure shame. It took me almost four years after graduating to set foot on that campus because it would, like, give me heart palpitations and flashbacks to, like, the worst experiences of my life. That's how much it impacted my self-worth and my self-confidence. So let's go back to junior year. Junior year of college, I was coming to terms with the fact that I lost my academic scholarships, that my GPA wasn't where it needed to be to get me into medical school, and I had to have a conversation with my academic advisor. I was a bio major at the time, and so we were going to talk about what I was going to be doing senior year after senior year to prep me for life post-college. So I told her my plans were medical school, and she looked me straight in the face and was like, that is not going to happen. You intellectually do not have the skill set. You do not have what it takes to succeed in the medical field. You will not get in. And I don't know what I was expecting her to say, um, but it was not that. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I um, Part of me knew that it was coming. And then there was also this part of me that like wanted some encouraging words. I wanted maybe to be given a plan on like, hey, you're not the only one that this has happened to. Here are some different pathways that you can take to still get into medical school or to still deliver babies. I didn't get that. I just got basically, you should become a teacher. You should do something else. You should switch your major because it's just not going to happen to you. And I believed her a thousand percent because I immediately went to go and try to change my major to health policy and health management. And I got a lot of pushback from the department chair because he was sick of biology students switching at the last minute because they're realizing that their grades aren't that great. And I had to like fight to have my major switched. I did successfully do that. I did have to stay an extra semester at college um, after everyone else graduated because I had credits that I needed to finish for that particular major. But I did what I needed to do. Anyway, so... The thing that sucks about that experience is that my advisor took one look at my GPA and decided which box I should be neatly packed into. And with the 2.6 GPA, it it felt like all of my potential was predetermined. Like there was no chance in hell that I could change anything around. And that was the that was like the wake up call that I needed 
it was so uncomfortable to go through that experience, but it was such a gift in hindsight, looking back on it, because it woke me up. It made me realize that no one was going to come to save me. And I had to do the job of saving my damn self. I had to stop hiding. I had to stop, you know, feeling ashamed of my experience and take full ownership and full responsibility for what had happened and what transpired. So the way that I started this process is um, during my health policy and health management major, I met this incredible two incredible professors as part of that program, and they opened up my world to all the different avenues that exist in healthcare. So nursing, midwifery, all of that. And so I decided that, well, because I want to be in women's health and I want to deliver babies, if I don't want to go the post baccalaureate route to bring up my science GPA and then try again to go the medical school route, which I ultimately decided that's not what I did not want to do because it was going to add more years and I just didn't want to go through that. So I was like, well, I'll just become a nurse midwife because as a nurse midwife, I'll still be able to do women's health. I can practice by myself. I'll be able to deliver babies. The only thing that I won't be able to do is perform C-sections, which I like I could live without that. So I set out on the path to get into accelerated nursing programs that would get me my NP with a specialty in midwifery. Well, every single program that I applied to denied me because my GPA was too low. Most of their requirements was a 3.0 GPA. And with my 2.6 GPA, every letter that came back was like, no, your GPA is too low. Please try again. I was devastated. I spent an entire week crying on my boyfriend's floor at the time. He is now my husband, but I did. I spent a whole week crying and he like had a heart to heart with me and was just basically like, this isn't you. You are not the type of person who is easily resolved. You don't give up. You are not so easily crumbled. Like you need to get it together. And so in that moment, after that conversation, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to apply to the nursing program at the community college. It was the only program that I hadn't applied to. I refused to apply to that program because in my mind at that time, community college was for people that weren't smart. I fixed that mindset real quick, but you know, that's what I was thinking at the time. The program accepted me. I did have to go and do all the prerequisites. And this is where the story gets good. I had to do all the prerequisites to get into that nursing program. So this is where the work the true work of going from failing out of seven classes to graduating with honors in a full-time nursing program happened. Because in order for me to get into the program, you had to have a really high GPA because it was merit-based. That's the acceptance into that community college nursing program. I then later find out that that is the toughest program that exists in our state, the community college, and it usually produces the best nurses and nurses that immediately pass the NCLEX upon graduation. So chose the right program. It was the most rigorous program. I did not know that at the time because I had my biases towards community colleges, but the program was hard and I did really well. But during the prerequisites, this is where I spent an entire summer working on myself. This was like my, like my college experience was what catapulted me into the personal development world, life coaching world, bettering yourself world, becoming everything it is that you want, goal setting, all of that. Because if I was gonna get into this program, it meant that I was gonna need to learn how to be a good student because I needed to make sure that I basically got all A's in my prerequisites, which were a lot of the same science courses that I had took taken when I was a bio major and failed. So I had to take microbiology. I had to take anatomy. I had to take physiology. I had to take dosage and calculations. Um, I had to take developmental psychology, which I had also not done well in when I was in college because I didn't have study skills. So I, I needed to do something to ensure that I got the grades that were going to get me into the program. So I started looking online on how to study. And this is where I came upon Cal Newport's book, How to Become a Straight A Student. I also started watching a lot of the OWN Network and I was buying like all the mindset books that Oprah would recommend. The first one that I read was actually called May Cause Miracle by Gabby Bernstein. And it was a lot about forgiveness work. And I had to forgive myself for my past college experience. I had to forgive my academic advisor. I had to forgive my parents. I had to forgive the school system that I came from. Like I had to just do a lot of work to change my view of my life and to stop playing the victim and start taking personal responsibility for where I was and stop blaming other people. 
So it was through that work, the mindset books, that my self-worth started to increase again, my self-confidence started to increase again, and I started to apply all of the the principles that Cal Newport teaches around how to become a straight-A student to the prerequisites that I was taking to get into the nursing program. So through that book, I taught myself how to read textbooks effectively. I taught myself how to take notes. I taught myself how to test myself and prepare for exams. I taught, I taught myself how to build relationships with my professors. I built a support system around myself through the tutoring center that was offered at the school with the relationships that I was building with my professors, with my boyfriend, with myself. And I read a book on time management by... Um, David Allen. It was like how to get things done and taught myself how to balance school, work, my health. I was like in the best shape of my life when I was in my nursing program and also how to balance my amazing relationship with my boyfriend at the time. And I was starting the beginnings of my life coaching company now, which is called She Rocks at College. I didn't know that it was going to turn into that at the time, but I was beginning to put out content and videos on YouTube about how I was becoming a better student. So I learned so much about myself during this time. I grew so much. I am so grateful for this experience. And I ended up graduating nursing school with honors. And I was so damn proud of myself. And that feeling of having been told to my face that I wasn't capable of doing something. And me not just sitting in self-pity. I mean, I did for that like week or so (laughs) that I told you guys about. I did change my major. Like, you know, I did get discouraged. But I didn't sit, I didn't indulge in that self-pity. I looked at everything around me and I was like, okay, it's on me. If I want this, if what I want is to be in the medical field, if what I want is to be a part of delivering babies, if this is what I want for myself, I'm going to have to be the one to give it to myself because no one is coming to save me. And that, that right there, that mindset that willingness to do whatever it takes, to go and learn the skills, to be a beginner, to try things out, is what allowed me to go from failing out of a bio major to graduating nursing school with honors. And I wanted that experience to be something that other college women got to experience. Me sharing my story on YouTube allowed other college women to come out and share their stories. And I started mentoring those girls. And I started giving advice to those women. And I started working with those women. And I built a really like four, a four week program back in 2015, all on how to study and the things that I had learned through my trial and error and adjusting the things that I saw in Cal Newport's book. Because what I ultimately believe is that no one should ever be made to feel like their educational dreams that they have for themselves are impossible or that they lack the brilliance or the potential to make what they want happen. And that is the reason why my life coaching company exists for college women. This is the reason why I built She Rocks at College to remind every college woman that she is smart enough, that she is capable enough, and she is worthy enough of college and life success, no matter her past circumstances, no matter her past background, no matter her past grades, no matter how many times she's failed and had to start again, because that was me. And this is what I stand for. This is what I believe. I am the life coach for college students. I created my signature program, Educated the Arts of Becoming a Good Student. It's an online program that helps college students earn better grades with ease. It equips them with the study skills, the mindset skills, and the emotional intelligence skills required to lead themselves through their academic journey all the way until they graduate. This is how I work with students. This is how I transform my life. I learned the the study skills and the time management skills. I learned how to make an effective study plan and make an effective balanced weekly schedule. And I learned how to stick to it. That was the mindset piece. That was the emotional intelligence piece. I learned how to not quit. I learned how to build persistence. I learned how to keep going no matter what until I got what it is that I wanted. And I was a labor and delivery nurse for a lot of years, and I now run this company full time. I've worked with 514 plus college women at this point, teaching them how to how simple succeeding in college really, really is. You just have to get really good at creating an effective study plan. Those are just study skills that you can learn. Right. 
there's nothing special that needs to change about you. You just need to be taught how to do it. You need to be taught how to think about your time, how to make a weekly schedule, how to incorporate all the things that are important to you. And you need to learn how to manage your mind, how to manage your emotions so that when things get hard, because they will, so that when things don't go to plan, because sometimes they won't, you don't quit. You don't make it mean that it's not for you, that you keep going until you get what it is that you want. That's what I teach inside of my program, Educated the Art of Becoming a Good Student, which is currently open for enrollment until May 29th. And we will not reopen the doors again until August, the end of August, during the f- right before the fall term. So if you are interested in learning more about that program, you can go into the description box. I also have a video on the screen right now that will tell you more about the program.